What's going on, guys? My name is Rango Lee. Welcome to the Bless Boulder Show. Episode two today, we're going to be talking about my family journey now getting to America and the struggles we had to deal with just trying to make a life for, for ourselves in America. And uh, I also want to introduce you to my co-host. She's riding shotgun all season long. The awesome Mylin fam. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Ringo. <laughs> What's going on, Mylin? <laughs> Nothing much. Just here yeah, today. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. As you guys can see, we're wearing the Stop Asian Hate t-shirts. We want to bring some attention to this really important topic. There's a lot of uh, hate crimes going on against our Asian people right now. And uh, it got to stop. So we're using this platform to, um, you know, bring attention to it. Um, make sure everyone's safe out there, especially our elderly people. So, uh, you know, we, we just can't stay silent. No, no, no. I mean, the thing is with us, you know, being, um, we're Asian, right. you know, Asian American. Um, you know, we may be the quiet ones, the ones don't that doesn't like confrontation, the ones that, a little bit more silent, but we're not, we're, we're strong, you know, right, um, right. we're just, we just like to create peace and not fear in people. And so I feel like because we're so silent sometimes and because we, like you said, we're just, we don't speak up as much as we would like because we want peace in this world that they, a lot of people think it is a weakness, but All it's, right. but we're not weak. We're very, very strong, you know? Um, and so I just wish that, you know, and I hope that all this stops just because we have so much going on in the world right now to to do this. Why? You know, right. why? Right. Yeah, we've been through a hard last 12 months, everybody as a nation, dealing with COVID, the the, the protests, the elections. It's hard for a lot of people. And now we're dealing with this? I know. Come it's, on, man. Uh, well, you know, we want to tell you, our people out there, stay strong. Um, Stay safe. Be safe. Look out for each other. Have each other's backs. And you know that we can do more, right? We can't just stay around, sit around and stay silent. So if there's a protest, attend the protest. You know, let, let, let's let our voice be heard. Social media, you could uh, post some stuff and say some stuff to, you know, uh, stop the violence. Please. And uh, we can even go a step farther by, you know, protecting our elderly people and each other in public by maybe thinking about, you know, carrying a weapon if you're comfortable with that, like, you know, mace or... I mean, we hope we don't have to get to that no, point. But don't. again, why? Why get to that point? I'm telling you, I just don't understand why we have to get to that point. Because... Uh, but I understand why we need to. If, yeah, protect ourselves, you know. If we're there. But again, um, you know, I see us as peacemakers and I just hope people don't take advantage of that, you know. Yeah. So... I feel we, for our elderly people, you know, yeah. our, our uh, senior citizens, it's... Uh, and you know the 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 a lot of the hate crime goes towards them because yeah. they can't protect themselves, and you, you know those 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 people that are doing it, you know the people out of fear really or just hatred, um, they're picking on the weak. So that's why I think you know if you have some elderly people at home, <sighs> your loved ones, you know, make sure they walk in twos or in groups. Maybe some of us uh, walk around in Chinatown and stuff like that. See them walking. We can walk them to the store. Yeah. Watch their backs as they're walking home. Ooh. We Maybe do some nighttime like safety walks. Something. Something. I mean, we gotta create something that makes us feel more safe, especially not just for us, but it's our parents. Imagine, I mean, that incident in Chinatown, you know, with that woman. <laughs> but thank God she had that stick to beat that guy. You know, she defended herself, not right. because she wanted to, but because she had to save herself. Right. And a Seventy-year-old grandma. And, and she and beat him up. Yeah, you know, he got the, the worst of it. He did, but again, like, we sh it shouldn't have to get there. It shouldn't nah. be like that. And. When I saw that, the first thing I thought about was, oh, my gosh, my mom, you know, yeah. she goes to Chinatown. She goes to all those places. You know, we own a restaurant. So, you know, she works so hard and, you know, she just randomly, if, you know, if something like that were to happen to my mom, I just I don't know what I would do. I mean, right. it would break my heart. And, you know, it's just why we, 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 don't we went through so know. much to get to America, to you know, to and now we're dealing with this and. And uh, but, you know, us as Asian people, we've gone through a lot and we're going to get through this, you know, so together. stay strong together. And, you know, how to defeat hate is with unity, with love, love with, um, you know, moments like this where we're speaking out about it because we can't let hate win. So, and you know, yeah. but now, honestly, mm -hmm. I understand what our black brothers and sisters be going through. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like we, we're getting a little bit of it right now and they've been going through it a for centuries, decades. And yeah. uh 
So we still stand strong with our Black Lives mm-hmm. Matter family. And uh, yeah, let's all get this th- through this together. Stay safe out there. Yeah. So let's start with your story. All I right. mean, this all is right. what well, I've been waiting somber. for. <laughs> I, you know, oh, shake it off. <laughs> Oh, I feel like all that, oh, <laughs> in my body. Do you feel that? Yeah, we need some, like, incense oh, now to kind of like wash off the, sage. The, 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 sage all. Oh. the dark. But, uh, yeah, let's let's get back to the light. Yeah, okay, yeah, I really, um, you know, this uh, this episode here is going to be uh, quite an episode. So, I mean, I want you to share, uh, you know, all the struggles that you went through right. and your family has gone through when you got here to the U.S. Yeah, it was one thing getting to leaving vietnam almost mm-hmm. passing away dying you know in episode one now in episode two it's two it's it's a whole different set of struggles once you get to america right mm-hmm. my mom and dad not educated i think they had like elementary school level education in vietnam didn't mm-hmm. speak a lick of english we didn't have no relatives that took us in and p- provided for us so you know they they just you know by sheer grit determination will uh made it happen yeah so um so yeah so what happened was so we left we got to america and we got sponsored over to fort smith arkansas 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 S- on the s- central s- central of the US. central u.s yeah known for so chickens and <laughs> mainly chickens and hot weather <laughs> so let me see arkansas is here then what montana and next to texas oklahoma oklahoma okay, yeah okay, yeah, okay, yeah okay, right okay, next yeah, to oklahoma so in, you know where that area is here. okay and uh you know, it was interesting times. Uh, mm. I just remember it being really hot. And we lived in the, actually in Arkansas, there, there, were, there weren't the projects there, but they were for low income housing people. It's called Allied Gardens, these, these apartments. And my family lived there because we couldn't, we didn't have enough money to live regular house. Well, anything, you guys just flew apartment. over just with nothing. Over. Yeah. And thank God uh, we got help from a um, Vietnamese Bible church. Oh. So out, out of all the places in the world, you know, the, the, the Christians, and I'm sure a lot of Buddhists too, but in our journey, Christians uh, helped us out a lot. And they just helped get us settled and helped get us going. And um, so, yeah, I just remember going to church every Sunday and having fun there because that was the only mm-hmm. Vietnamese community you saw in the whole city of Fort Smith, Arkansas, because it's mostly uh, Mi Chang's, you know, uh, yeah. Caucasian people, white people, right? Yeah. And some black people, but mostly uh, Caucasians. And so it was nice to s- kind of have a nice Vietnamese gathering place in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Oh, nice. I've yeah. never been to Arkansas. No, you were painting that vision. Chickens and mostly Caucasians. Not you know? too much there. Yeah, not too much. Not too much. A lot of land. A lot of land. Right. A lot of land. You, th- you think right now is uh, right now it's building quite a bit? No, <laughs> Just, no, it's not real estate building in Arkansas. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, one, you don't think we can build houses in Arkansas could, and make it like the thing? About, <laughs> it's about opportunity. There's limited opportunities. Uh, you know, farming. Yeah, farming, it's mainly yeah. farming, or you're working at the chicken factory, and. So I just remember growing up. You know, it was fun days. It was summer hot days. You know, me and my brother John we were like. Uh, we we're almost like twins, so uh-huh. you know we would go down to the river and catch crawdads. Oh, yeah, fun. crawfishes. Yeah, <laughs> we call them crawdads in Arkansas. Wait, how do you do? You just stick your finger in there and like pick. No, it up? you turn over a rock. A rock. You, oh, you use, just turn over a rock like a crab, like yeah, a little baby crab. Oh, yeah, we caught so those during the summertime. What, we never what, ate them or anything. We just put them in jars and. And stuff. then do what? Do what with them? Just put them in jars and I don't know. They release die? them or they die okay. later. You know, oh, man. kids. Or we raised chickens. <laughs> we raised chickens. Uh, that's, that's good. That's what I remember about my childhood, uh, holding chickens and uh, these chicken fights, cock fights and stuff oh, like that. Oh, yeah. yeah you know, I heard stuff. about that stuff. <laughs> but stuff. it's kind of scary holding. They're feisty. Yeah, chickens are feisty. Yeah. Yeah. Chicken fights. So then, you know, when I was little, I didn't really know what my parents did, except for I know first business my family started to make it in america to make ends meet with we mm. my dad started a landscaping business Ooh. yeah to, yeah. to um, make ends meet and i remember my brother john used to having to go work with them uh-huh. and john was at the time eight nine <laughs> years that's old that's old enough to work yes. yeah yeah he was yeah. a bigger guy yeah. so he got he had to go work my you know free labor my dad appreciated that yeah. and and we did that for a while and then and then my mom and dad I know it was, you know, we were, we were tight on money. There was uh, still uh, limited opportunities. But when they, my dad got a job at the Whirlpool plant, 
that's when we kind of made it. Oh, the war- wait, wait. Whirlpool. It's oh, the, like, the dish, the brand yeah. Whirlpool, the dishwasher, refrigerator. Stuff? Yeah, they made dishwasher oh. and Whirlpool, and then you know now he's getting a steady paycheck. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about benefits or anything, but they probably do. You know, big companies like that probably. Big company, and yeah. then I don't know what my mom did, but I do remember then at the time she was doing odd jobs like restaurant work and stuff like that, mm. kitchen work, dishwashing, and then she got a job <laughs> at Tyson Chicken. Yeah, which is a steady, you know, job. Yeah. And then that's when I remember my family kind of made it, uh-huh. right? We, we was making steady money. We wasn't struggling. I remember it was good times for my family. And then we bought a uh, house. Nice. Yeah, after, I, I don't know, maybe five years living in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Do you remember the house? I do remember the house. What does it look like? It was a three-bedroom, one-bath, probably 1,200 square feet, okay. Rambler. Okay, typical. Uh, like, yeah, yeah. Super beat up, right? Oh, they didn't have no money for, like... A really brand new, a real brand new big house, but you know my dad fixed it up really nice. Aww. Actually, it was so nice it was in the Fort Smith newspaper. No way! Fort Smith newspaper saying, "Wow!" And it was, the, the article said, "Turn turning home house to home or something." Oh, yeah, yeah. that's so cool, dude. Flowers everywhere. Oh, did he keep the the newspaper? Was it a newspaper article or was it, was it a magazine? newspaper article? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Did yeah. you guys save it? Yeah, we have. I, I don't know. I, I'm gonna dig it up, but I oh. remember my sister Julie. Yeah. When they took the picture for the photo she was standing in the in the window uh-huh. looking out at the photographer oh that's kind of cute their, with their little bow haircut oh that's so cute all the little asian girls had the bow haircut yeah that's how you do it you put the bow there and you cut shout it shout out oh, to the moms yeah. that, and the <laughs> daughters that had to sh- had to rock the bow haircuts oh yeah. my gosh and the guys did too yeah i do remember having a bow yeah. haircut if you don't have it you're not cool no 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 now we just shave the sides <laughs> and leave the top yeah <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, that's 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 our story from you know when we was in Arkansas and how we kind of made it. Cool. But then, so if I can freeze time, yeah, I would take my family back to that moment because I remember how happy my mom and dad was. Uh-huh. We you know we had like two cars, we were having steady jobs. You know <laughs> we're making it in America, we're surviving, we're thriving, mm-hmm. and I don't know why we didn't just stay there because it was good times for our family. We just bought a house, Aww. we're happy. Yeah, we did, like did we went on weekend trips up to the Ozarks and went swimming at those swimming holes and went to dinner. You know, it, it was good times for our family. It sounds like the life that you want. Like, it was a life. Yeah, we, that you want. It living was the American good. dream. Yeah, American dream. Yeah, we you know we was low in, uh, in Vietnam, almost dying. Then we made it to America. Yeah, bought the house, and now I don't know whose good idea it was, but <laughs> my dad <Mom>. said no. <laughs> my dad said we're gonna buy a restaurant. <laughs> we're gonna oh. open a Chinese restaurant. In Arkansas. In Ar- Fort Smith, Arkansas. Okay. And this was 1985 when uh, Chinese restaurants were starting to get popular. Uh-huh. And then, I don't know. I don't know how it happened, but then my mom went along with it. They both quit their jobs. Uh-huh. And they was at the Chinese restaurant all the time. That, that's it's it. so much. I never saw them. Oh, I just man. remember never seeing them. Yeah, but the restaurant business is hard. Especially hard if you're going to build it. If you're building it, it's hard. You're there all the time, committed, seven, 24 hours in seven days. Eight, nine in the morning till 10 at night, seven days a week. Oh, you know. Oh, let's, let's give some love for all the restaurant owners. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> Remember? Where's your thing? Yeah. Where's your, Shout out to all the restaurant Where's your heart? Owners. Where's your heart? I don't know. Is that a heart? Oh, You're that's like, a heart. Yeah, <laughs> My bad. Come on. Shout, Shout out, out to, to all the, the restaurant owners, fall owners, <laughs> yeah. Chinese restaurant owners. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, I think what it was, was my mom and dad, you know, they were they were making in America and they wanted more. I think who doesn't want more. Right. And things were good, but things could be great. Right. And I think they 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 wanted that greatness. So that's why they traded in the two normal jobs mm. for the opportunity for wealth, which mm. is to own a restaurant. Yeah. And I just remember it was really hard times for my family owning it. The restaurant was called um, Golden Palace. Which ah. is <laughs> Very nice for a Chinese it is. It's, yeah, Golden Palace. <laughs> Golden Palace. Who would want that? And they had free labor. So my brother John. Yeah. So my brother John, he was eight, nine. Uh-huh. He 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 was a dishwasher in the restaurant uh-huh. in the back with my dad. And then my sister Jackie, by this time she's fifteen. She was working the front. She was the um, host and cashier. Yeah. My mom was the waitress. And mm-hmm. so we had a full you staff. Got it. And full got service. The, <laughs> yeah. But I remember that time for my family, especially for me, it was really hard yeah. because I, was, I would come home from school and then my mom would pick up all of my siblings, my two brothers, my brother and sister. And she'll pick up my younger sister, Julie, which was 
set six at the time so she couldn't do nothing but she couldn't stay at home with me yeah because i couldn't take care of her because i was only like eight or nine yeah and so they she took him to the restaurant and i would stay at home by myself Aww. for like i think like two years no yeah every day after school i stay home by myself because i was kind of in between where i was too young to work at the restaurant yeah and i was too um old and i could stay at home by myself and watch myself yeah so you were by yourself with no adult no adults no way for like two or three years see you were such every a day good after kid. school oh no. my gosh you were such you, you listened to your parents you stayed home inside <laughs> no i was bad remember there's no supervision yeah, now you, oh so you you were bad yeah i remember oh. um oh, no. and i was skinny too i never had dinner for some reason i, ne- I just never ate kids man you know you know kids don't eat unless if you're you not force forced them. yeah you're not yeah. forced to so skinny eat. I remember one cool thing though. Every every evening when it started getting dark, yeah. Somehow my mom left me a dollar every day. She yeah. just somehow hooked me up with a dollar, right? <laughs> and I I saw that the sun was about to go down. I had a I had a bike, uh-huh. and I would ride the bike like five ten minutes to this laundry mat that was uh-huh. up the street from my house. Yeah. And I would buy a bag of chips uh-huh. for fifty cents and a soda for fifty cents. Uh huh. <laughs> that was your dinner. That was my dinner. No. I, I wouldn't eat it there. Oh. I was like, wait till I get home, <laughs> and to eat in front of the TV. <laughs> You had a uh, bag of chip and, and uh, soda. I, I, uh, you got to see a picture of me when I was yeah. little. I was really skinny and you dark. Need, you you find that picture. I, I'm going to find the picture. See, and post even it. with a bag of chips and a soda, you were chillaxing. With yeah, the, no supervision, yeah. doing whatever. And then uh, another bad thing that happened was somehow you know, I was in second or third grade, no supervision. And I had. So the, no one's still home. No one's home, right? So Everyone's at the yourself. restaurant. Okay. Everyone's at the restaurant. And um, I had the bright idea to go shoplifting. So I oh. I was like in second or third. You don't grade. remember the the why? I remember why. Okay, I want to know wanted, why. I wanted, I wanted lead pencils. I wanted me- <laughs> the mechanical <laughs> pencils. Out of all things, <laughs> right? Those were cool because they they cost some money, and my parents never gave me money, so mm-hmm. I wanted these mechanical pencils where you put the lead in, and yeah, you push yeah, it, and I know like about lead it. Comes I, out. I thought it was cool yeah, it when is. I went to school, yeah. and so I got grabbed my boy. And I was like, hey, well, let's go Safeway. Let's go shoplift. He's like, yeah, okay, let's get some. Uh, he didn't know what we were doing. He was just following my lead. We get there. We still like handful of lead pencils. Oh, my God. He gosh. steals them. Steals them. I steal them. We walk out. And bam, we get caught by like the security of oh, Safeway. No. And these guys, security was serious. They wasn't playing games. Maybe I should have caught something else. They're lead pencils. <laughs> <laughs> they wasn't playing games. They handcuffed us. Oh man! And then you know we're like, dude, we're like seven, six, seven years old. They handcuffed oh both God. of us. They take us. They put us in the back of the cop car. You didn't beg. You're like, I'm so no, sorry. No, I was crying. I know. But you didn't, you didn't beg. You guys didn't beg. My buddy so begged, sorry, so and he was crying. No, no, they they were oh, like, no, we're taking you to man. jail. And so we're back in the cop car. They're taking us to jail. Oh my gosh. And so I, I still at that point, I'm still like, like it's just really happening. You know, my parents are gonna kill me. You know. Yeah. And then the cop in the car said. Yeah, I say I asked the cop, how, "What kind of food do we eat in jail?" <laughs> you know, I'm a kid. I'm like, you know, how, how much time are we gonna do, right? Oh, oh my gosh! And he goes, "You get a, you get white bread and if and water. That's all you get." I'm like, "Oh damn, man, that doesn't sound good." Then he goes, "If you're good, sometimes you get Kool Aid." Oh, and you're like, okay. I'm like, I'm like, all right, that sounds a little better. Then I just started crying. I mean, I was so Aww. sad that we had to drink. Uh, eat uh bread and kool-aid but and did you though so they no so they took oh. us to jail right which is like the county courthouse uh-huh. and then my they called our parents and our parents came picked us up and man i got my ass beat by no. my mom and dad mm-hmm. when they found out but, yeah that generation uh, yeah you yeah beat, go, i can imagine what happened oh my god yeah go pick your stick outside in uh-huh. the bush you better That's put a on a couple gonna, more pants <laughs> put on a couple more pants you're gonna get a whipping boy oh my god <laughs> so yeah so going back, you know, and I'm sure my siblings were suffering with it because, you know, my my siblings, they should be at home doing homework, uh-huh. uh, playing outside in the yard with the kids. But they were at the restaurant because mm-hmm. my mom and dad, they needed free labor so our family can come up, you know, mm-hmm. become successful. And so so I'm sure if you ask them, they probably hated that time, too. Aww. And um, I don't know what happened, but this restaurant was really struggling. My, my parents, they, they didn't have experience running a restaurant and... And I'm sure, I don't know, the food didn't taste like good how good Chinese food would. And if you're slow, you sometimes sell the same food the next day. And well, I'm you got to make ends meet trying sometimes. Trying to make ends meet, right? Stretch, yeah. stress the dollar, stress the, the, the product. Yeah. And I remember it was really hard times. Uh, they were arguing a lot. So, um, you know, I wanted to... It made the relationship... Like, it strained the whole strained. relationship. Yeah, it does. For two or three years, you know, for oh. my family. But, and that's 
that's chasing the American dream, right? We want to, you know, they couldn't just go work for somewhere else, you know, to, you're not going to get ahead by working for someone at minimum wage. Yeah. So they're chasing their American dream, trying to, you know, take a risk. Yeah. And uh, so this, what happened? So this what happened? risk backfired. Oh. You know, they're arguing a lot. I remember yeah. um, I rem- there was a moment at the restaurant where I was there that day. I think it was on the weekend. And uh, so they're arguing about money. And then my dad, you know, he put some hands on my mom and it was oh. really physically abusive. And I'm, I'm six years old. And yeah. I, but I remember, I, you know, I remember how I felt. Mm-hmm. And I felt like scared. You know, I felt uh, sad for my mom. And she was, she was, you know, getting physically abused, you know. And um, yeah, it was hard times for my family during that restaurant. Dang that Chinese restaurant. <laughs> no, but you know, you do remember, you do, you know, with failures, there come successes. Well, they say fail forward, right? Yeah, fail forward. Well, that's why I, so, from, I would never open a restaurant in my lifetime because you of that. You gain experience and then you learn from that and you rise. Yeah, you rise. You know, yeah. we wouldn't be talking now about the experience uh, of owning a restaurant, what it takes, how hard it is if, it uh, is. if my family didn't go through it. We own run. We know yeah, the you, you own, your family owns yes. the restaurant. And <laughs> it's at <laughs> Unforgettable, you guys, in North Bend. <laughs> Shout out to North Bend, Unforgettable, if, if you're guys, in the area. If you're in the area, hook my parents up. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Asian, Vietnamese fusion a little yes, bit, yes. really good drinks. Simple, clean, good drinks, good food, um, passionate about what they, they deliver and what they serve. So Shout yeah. out to Unforgettable. Unforgettable. <laughs> I had to sneak one in there. <laughs> okay, no. Ours, I wish ours was, ours was very, very forgettable because <laughs> it didn't work out. So going back to the, the moment of the restaurant, they were arguing a lot. And yeah. then I remember that carried over to home life. They were yeah. arguing a lot. None of us saw them. All the kids are struggling. And um, and so after a lot of the abuse, my mom couldn't took it no more. So she took... Oh. So the restaurant shut down. You know, they tried their best. There's no money. The restaurant shut down. And uh, they say... I don't know the statistic, but it's really high statistic of why people divorce. Husband yes. and wife divorces. Mm-hmm. I heard it's like 70% of the time is over like finances. I believe it. And then the other like 30s infidelity or something, but... It's really high because of money. Oh, it's always either about if you're going to divorce is cheating, cheating, finances, or uh, infidelity. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Those things. Yeah. So, so my parents, you know, my mom wasn't going to take it no more. Yeah. And I saw the w- abuse. And that's why I told myself, I'm never going to be like that. Yeah. And uh, so she took us to Portland. So she's like, I'm done. We're separating. So she took me and um, the four kids. Mm-hmm. Richie wasn't born at the time. Oh. She took us to uh, Salem, Oregon, which is yeah. a suburb of Portland. Yeah, I know where that's. And man, we started over. That's like the second time we started <laughs> over. I'm telling you, we moved in with my um, dad's sister. Yeah. And after two weeks, it didn't work out. So she moved us into this little apartment. And I remember, I remember it was hard when we first got to America, but it was really hard when we went to Portland Oregon? or Salem, Oregon. Uh-huh. We were like sleeping on the floors on like uh, cardboard because we had oh, no dang. money. Cardboard. Remember, we just lost wow. the restaurant. No oh, yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom's trying to raise like four kids by herself. Uh, right by now. herself in Salem with no <laughs> help. My dad's not around. Yeah. And I remember for six months, again, Christian organization Aww. somehow hooked us up with like boxes of toys and some food. And Aww. and I remember me and my brother didn't go to school or anything. And my mom was just sad because like she just, you know, it was. She's it was, trying her best. She's trying you know, her best. With what it is. She's trying her best. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, um, and then somehow my dad talked her back into coming back to Fort Smith, Arkansas, uniting. And yeah. he's going to change. So we moved back to Fort Smith after like a year struggling in Oregon. This we were glad that mm-hmm. happened. That that was uh, that that was over. And so now we're in back in Arkansas. Uh-huh. And wait, wait, from from Portland and back to Arkansas. Yeah. Now <laughs> we move back to Arkansas <laughs> you know, to Portland. try to make it work. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uniting the family. And uh I don't. I remember those. They were arguing a lot again. So Aww. I don't know what happened. But then now my mom's like, "All right, you didn't change. Mm-hmm. I'm out of here." So that's when the moment she's like, "I have a start over in me right now. We can. I can either move to Orange County, California. Mm-hmm. You know that Orange County. There's a lot of Vietnamese there. Quận mm-hmm. Cam. They call it Quận Cam. Quận Cam. Quận right? No, I never heard that word. Yeah, yeah, Orange County. Yeah. Or Seattle, Washington. Mm-hmm. So we knew a pasture that moved to Seattle, Washington, a little ahead of us. And it said the weather's better than Calif- in California, but the pasture was in Seattle. He could help us out so we could uh-huh. make a decision. 
both places have a lot, a lot of opportunities for the kids to grow up right. way better than Fort Smith, Arkansas. So my mom made the decision last second that we're going to move to Seattle, Washington. Yay! So we, yeah, so we Yay. packed up the bags. We, we had a guard, uh, yard sale. Uh -huh. We sold the house. Yeah. Um, we sold the house for 25000 uh, What did you buy for? Uh, no. I don't remember. No, no. Like <laughs> 10000 or something. Uh -huh. But we sold it for twenty five. And then I remember it was, we were about to get into the car and we're leaving. And it, it was a really hard time for... Uh, uh, my family with my dad we're leaving him right he's yeah. he's not coming because it's not working out and i remember he went around to every kid <laughs> he went around to every kid and begged us if we could stay with him like Aww. he went to me he's like hey you know stay with daddy you know <sighs> that's hard yeah it was hard <coughs> but i <I'll> <coughs> excuse what? me but i was like imagine nah. if it was why or somebody or some i mean just saying if you have my kids too I remember doing that with my mom and my dad. So I totally understand how you feel. It's hard. It was hard. I was nine, 10. Mm -hmm. I knew what he was asking, mm -hmm. but I couldn't do it. You know, I'm, I love mom. You know, yeah. mom was way closer to me than dad growing up. Um, you know, my dad has, uh, you know, me and him growing up, I didn't really like him that much because he was never there. He was, oh. he was physically there, <clears throat> but he wasn't mentally there. He wasn't like a normal you know, American dad, like, play ball with you, take you to your games, or yeah. take you on the weekends or anything. He would just be at the restaurant, I remember, or at home sleeping. That was, like, my dad. And, you know, then him, you know, uh, abusing my mom, you yeah. know, made me not like him that much mm -hmm. more. So there was no way I was going to stay with him. So but all the kids told him no. But now that you think about it, him working so much and him sleeping because he's so tired. Yeah. Like, what do you think about that now, reflecting back to... You're like, I wish I had a dad who played ball with me. I wish I had a dad who did all these things with me. I mean, what do you think about his, like, what his actions then? Yeah, you know, now I have, actually, the last five years, my relationship with my dad got really, really close. Uh, uh, God bless his heart. He passed two years ago. Mm -hmm. But, you know, five years before that, we got really close. He he came back. He moved to Vietnam, and, and he was a rolling stone. He was doing his mm -hmm. thing. But, you know, I really appreciated that he worked so damn hard for my family. He don't, he might not say I love you, yeah. but you know, by his actions, he showed us that he loved us by just working, you know, yeah. and trying to, you know, and then him getting sacrificed into uh, leaving Vietnam alone with, you know, 20 people that, yeah. you know, so we, he can get to a refugee camp to sponsor us over. You know, he definitely tried a lot. So know? when you see it, men are different. Like even including my dad, men show love differently than right. women do. So sometimes we do point our fingers because I did it with my dad too. Mm. Especially mm. Vietnamese dads. I know. Like. They just don't express it by words. But as kids, we don't see the actions. You know, we just see an ongoing routine. You know, the, we don't know the depth of what they do. They, they do things. And they may not say why they do it, you know. So as now as a gro adults and being a father yourself, you know. Yeah, it's tough being, you know, it's tough being a dad. And yeah. So... So we so we got on the plane yeah. without him, and we went to we moved to Seattle, Washington, and uh, that was 1990. I mm -hmm. was 10 years old, I remember. And again, Christian organization <laughs> shout out <laughs> to all the good Christian organization, yes. spiritual organization, Buddhist organization that help a lot of people out. Mm -hmm. They took us in. They found us a house right by Northgate Mall, uh, two bedroom, one bath house. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, five siblings now, yeah, and my mom. And I remember the first year they was paying our rent. They was taking us around to sign up for school. And I, I, I was like, yeah, Seattle ain't bad. It's pretty nice here. It does rain a damn lot. Different than <laughs> Arkansas. Not as hot. <laughs> but, you know, we're, we're, it ain't that bad right now yeah. since we got to Seattle. They gave us uh, clothes and food. But then after a year, they couldn't sustain that, right? They're like, yeah. you guys got to work and, you know, go get on sand on your own. And my mom was alone and she couldn't do that. Yeah. So then... Uh, we found we, we had to move somewhere so we moved to the Seattle housing projects mm -hmm. it was called Cedarville mm -hmm. shout out to Cedarville <laughs> all my Cedar villains back in the days <laughs> Cedar Cedarville oh, C Cedar villains did you make just make that up <laughs> we called ourselves villains? the Cedar villains <laughs> <laughs> and and now we moved into the hood the housing projects uh -huh. and it, that's where it was pretty it was pretty rough there it yeah. was it was pretty rough that was where we're like wow uh, this is poverty 
you yeah. know this is food stamps yeah this is other kids that don't have their parents around or like dad's not home so you know you mom's you? trying to figure it out and that's where like my siblings and i we started dealing with a lot of uh you know now we're starting to be 11 12 years old <laughs> yeah you know now we're dealing with gangs and drugs and violence that's around the age and my mom was never home she was working like two jobs i remember her uh she had mainly two main jobs she was mm -hmm. a dishwasher at at in chinatown at this like <laughs> cafe uh. and i remember sometimes i'll go with my sister to pick her up like at two in the morning wow yeah because you know the cafe, cafe would get this? out it was called a uh, saigon it was kinda... super hooded back in the day i remember <gasps> those like shootings there all the time oh, dang, but my mom was a cook in the back she was not a cook wow. but a dishwasher or yeah, server yeah, yeah. or something so we'd pick her up and then another job she had to make ends meet was she would clean offices at night oh yeah so a lot of most of the time she would go alone but sometimes she would ask me to go with her because uh -huh. she said she would be scared of ghosts <laughs> so i'm like man i don't want my mom scared of ghosts well, late at night yeah, i'm scared of ghosts too <laughs> mom i don't know if i should be going uh, so what happened did you guys ever end up seeing ghosts no we never saw a ghost so but she was scared of ghosts so she took me along with her we would like be cleaning bathrooms yeah. and offices vacuuming sometimes uh she'll take my brother my sister i don't remember it was hard times it was yeah. you know we're in the housing project right yeah so then after that, my dad, I think we've been now. Can we talk about ghosts? Yeah, you want to talk about <laughs> ghosts? I don't want to talk about ghosts. What, how? That's, I have a curiosity. I mean, because when you said that she's afraid of ghosts, did she ever tell you why she's afraid of ghosts or how she's seen ghosts? Why would she be afraid of ghosts? You know, I think just growing up in the Vietnamese culture, you know, all of our parents or older siblings talk about uh, Jing, Jing Ma. That yeah, means like, uh, mean ghosts in Vietnamese, Ma. Ma. And, and we just grew up on that stuff and it was freaked the hell out of me and everybody, all my siblings growing up, like, it was just a part of growing up. They would tell us stories of it. Oh. And we so, so there scary. wasn't, I mean, she'd never seen any though. I, no, we. I don't think we saw some, Have but you? you know. <laughs> have you <laughs> i experienced some some stuff in the uh, well yeah, you know as real estate agents we do see some really crazy yeah homes. yeah i did yeah as a um i remember one time there was this house that i was listing it was in shelton washington yeah. which is like super country woodsy area it was like out there in the woods and uh -huh. i was listing it it was a short sale so like uh no one lived there for a couple years or a couple uh, a year or two uh -huh. And I, the house was clear. I walked in there to do something, and the the um, the 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 water turned on in the the bathroom. It was like just turned on while I was there. I'm by like, yourself. By yourself. I was like, well, did you see the knob up and everything? No, I didn't see the knob <gasps> go. I just saw the water go on. I'm like, whoa! <laughs> so I booked, I tailed out of there. And There's no way it could have been not a ghost, would it? Would it? I mean, sometimes um, it's in our head. Who knows, man? But, but I was scared. Did you see the water? I running? saw the water turn on. <gasps> Oh. in front of me and i was like and i was freaked out so thank god we sold the house eventually and to have it, never had to but go you back listed there. the house or did listed the house oh yeah. my gosh do yeah. you have to disclose things like that when you see it no right no yes? no, no. no. <laughs> i think you only got to disclose things if it's a violent murder that happened oh. in the house a violent murder yeah because you know, natural you, deaths are okay right because that's natural yeah. like you know but violent murders uh, yeah you might have to disclose that yeah, well, the thing is, if the seller doesn't disclose it to you, you don't know. Or do you have to ask them? Is that a question that you would ask? Sorry, this is a real estate question. <laughs> just because I want to know. <laughs> you should. If it's violent, no, you don't ask them. If they, you don't, if they want to tell you. Probably in real estate, less to know is Less you know better. is better. Okay, <laughs> less you know is better. Because I have clients who ask me. I'm like, I'll ask them. Because right. I don't know. You yeah, know? yeah, I don't know. Yeah, interesting time. <laughs> but anyways, so, sorry, so, backtrack. So <laughs> going back to the housing projects, after two years, my mom and dad, they split up. And then my dad, he made up with my mom somehow, <laughs> sweet talk there. So he followed us up to Seattle and he, li he lived in the housing project with us. Uh -huh. So it, was, it, lo it got a little bit better when he got there because uh, now he was working, helping to provide some money for the family. And so I remember just... He'd be gone for months at a time. He would go up to Alaska, be a fisherman for well, like months a good, at a time. That's so, a good job. That's a good, that's good job. Dangerous. Number one dangerous job. Is it? Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. I think it was number one. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes we won't see him. Sometimes we see him and he'll just have tons of money when he comes back and <laughs> buys whatever he wants. So we, we appreciated that. Uh, yeah. It was just the housing project days was, was challenging. Um, you know, we didn't have money. My mom was really brave, but she was also very cheap <laughs> she well, never she had to be frugal she had to be frugal yeah. I, so i don't i don't blame her so yeah. we never got anything growing up no christmas presents no new clothes i would wear everything hand down from john and i don't know where john would get the clothes 
Have you, did and you ever ask him? I'm kidding. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he stole a lot of them. We, we did live right by Northgate well. Mall. We did go shoplift a lot. Uh. Um, so at the time, John would, he, he wouldn't even be home. I remember he didn't live in the project with us hardly. He would live oh, in like you? Beacon Hill with his buddies and would take oh, the bus wow. down there. So he was doing his thing. We got, me and my brother, John, we got smart. We never got into gangs, but we hung out with a lot of gang members. But For we, the protection? Just for protection or they're our <laughs> friends because they live yeah. in the housing project with yeah. us. And they asked us to join, but we just no, like, no. why would you, we just join one color? And yeah. so we're always smarter than that. Oh, that's good. That's so John good. John hanging out at the pool halls, be a wang. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah. always hear about gangs so, and stuff. But as a girl, I guess there's not much like that. But you hear about boys most of the time in gangs and yeah, stuff not like too that. many girl gangs here. Was it like Bloods and Crips or something? Yeah, it was like the OLBs, uh, I don't know. <laughs> the Oriental Local Bloods, oh, and the YTs, uh, young, young UISB, Young Seattle Boys. So you just and, make up whatever and you call yourself like a gang. Yeah, but you know. I, it was necessary, right? Because mm -hmm. remember the wave of immigrations that came over in the 90s, the immigrants that came over in the 80s and 90s, they're Asian. Yeah. And people pick on, like right now, people pick on Asians because they're different, they're smaller, they're they're whatever. So they these guys had to form gangs to protect themselves in the neighborhoods. So I get it, mm -hmm. right? I, I get it. And mm -hmm. uh, a lot of our friends were gang members. So we were dealing with that, uh, stealing cars. Remember, we don't have anything. These are all housing project kids, right? Yeah. Now we're like 12, 13. We want stuff. We want nice clothes. We want to go to the movies, but we had no money. So oh. what are you going to do? You had to hustle. You know, you uh. had to, you know, sell drugs. I remember my friends used to sell. Now weed's legal, but back then they were, weed was illegal. We, yeah. they, we sold it all the time. I wasn't so much a drug dealer like they was. I just sold a little bit, but not. they were like, you know, they were moving some stuff. Yeah. Um, and then and then we got a little older and then they moved into crack. Hey, we're selling crack over stuff. on the... Uh, yeah, you, downtown, UW, the Ave. That's crazy. Selling crack. I would, uh, I would watch out for them, make sure that, you know, cops ain't seeing them. Yeah. Like, we were doing some dirt at, like, 14 or 15 yeah. years old. Imagine you guys were doing that. Imagine what the kids are doing now yeah. and how young they're doing it. That's that's what scares me as a mom, as a parent. It scares me so much when drugs are involved because, you know, once you get into that, it's so hard to get out. Yeah. If drugs. you use it, it's even worse. You it's know like, what I mean? Because you live. That's man. You just. Oh. Yeah. It was drugs. Is drugs is interesting. You know, it's, it's. I think it's a part of growing up, young, like you know, experimenting. You know, when you're 18, 19, 20, college. Yeah. You know, I think it's a little part, a healthy part of being a young adult. But Dang. the risk, though, with drugs is addiction. Some right? people can't I get look, out of it. Can't get out I'm of it. Like, that's you, my know, worst fear. you know how addicting coke is or heroin no, or molly? I've, I've never, I never tried Very it. Very addicting. <laughs> I've never I'm, tried it. I don't know how addicting it is. I'm, I, I never know? tried it either. It's just, I've heard <laughs> from my friends it's really addicting. <laughs> and the alcohol, too, right? That's, yeah. that's a drug and all that stuff. But, yeah. So, but we were dealing with that like 13, 14 years old, you mm -hmm. know, smoking weed and selling weed and crack and stuff like that. We were bad kids. We were like housing project kids. Yeah. So I remember my mom was very stressed out. You know, now she's still holding two jobs. My dad's not home. He's in Alaska. And my, my brother, John's in Beacon Hill, and I'm over <laughs> there. You know, and then I got, you know, doing my thing. She knows what's going on, but she can't stop us because she's not home. To yeah. stop. And then my, the only ones that were pretty good was Richie. Really? He was like he's five. Oh, so he he's was, so sweet, and he's still so he's, sweet. He's a cool, cool, uh -huh. cool, cool person, cool dude. Uh -huh. uh, but at five, you know, he's so he's just running around the neighborhood, so no, no parental guidance, you know, doing his thing. But he didn't like follow you guys. No, he was five, right? Uh, but little brothers like to follow big brothers a lot of times and like copy what they do. No, nah, we didn't I mean? want him to follow us around. Oh, good. You know, he's five <laughs> See, years go old. Home. Do? <laughs> Richie, go home. There was one funny story about Richie though. Uh -huh. Somehow he followed a bunch of housing kids. There was like <laughs> three or four of them. They're a little older, like seven or eight years old. Uh -huh. They were going to the mall, Northgate Mall, which uh -huh. was like three blocks away. And Richie followed them there. Oh my god! I don't know what they were doing at the mall, right? Uh -huh. But somehow he got, he lost them at the mall. And then so me somehow we're hanging out in the housing project, and we see a cop car pull up. Oh dang! And Richie's sitting in the back of the cop no car way. with a yeah with a cop hat on though. Oh, he has, so he, he probably got lost. And then some the cop came in, came out of the car, and he's like. Hey, I don't. Anybody know who this kid is? <laughs> He's just the cops just knew to bring Richie back to the housing projects because oh he looks gosh. like maybe one like of the kids that live there. And oh. we're like, yeah, that's my brother. <laughs> I'll, I'll take him. <laughs> oh, they. Oh my gosh, that's so crazy. Yes, yeah, thank God, like nothing happened to him. Yeah, or he like, got lost. He got or lost. 
yeah. got jumped. You know, that's one of the things, you know. Well, he's five years old. I don't know about Well, you never jumped. know. Because mm-hmm. we lived in the projects and I hear people getting jumped all the time. All the time. And, and they're different that, you know? that's why people join gangs right yeah and then my at the time then at the time my sister jackie she was the only one that was pretty stable mm-hmm. at the, by this time she's like 18 mm-hmm. she's just going to high school and college but she's still in the projects but she was very hands-off as a older sister she wasn't like a second mom mm-hmm. you know sometimes she'll hook us up but she was just very hands-off she very, did she ever get you guys out of trouble no but she didn't she but we didn't um no, she. I, I just think growing up with my mom and dad and growing up in Arkansas and uh-huh. her having them be, be responsible for a restaurant, uh. she was just done with it. She just didn't want no more responsibilities. Yeah. And all three of us were really bad. We were like, you know, that, uh, we were just getting in a lot of trouble. And so she was just done with it. You know, she yeah. doesn't want the responsibility and she didn't take it. Yeah. And, but, you know, we all turned out okay. Yeah, you guys turned out great. <laughs> turned oh, out my gosh. Okay. I want to hear each and every one of you guys, like, what you, what you guys are doing now, what you guys gone through. I mean, there's so much. Yeah. So then I remember the, um, a low point of our lives was, uh, you know, we're involved in gangs. Yeah. And then me, my brother, and two of my really close friends, we got caught doing a drive-by shooting. Oh. Yeah, I was I was a driver. and um, And that was the first time I went into juvenile hall. Oh. And that, that was the lowest point of my life where, you know, <clears throat> um, I didn't know where my life was headed. And then my mom came visiting me in juvenile hall and mm. uh, she came into the, the visiting area. Oh. And that was the first time that was a that was the saddest time I ever felt because I saw the pain in my mom's eyes. You know, like her baby. So damn now. Hard, you know, and you guys do all this. Yeah. Yeah. She worked so damn hard to get us here. And I just got caught doing a shooting with my brother, and he's in yeah. prison because he's uh, 18, and we're oh, I was man. 17. That's the and, worst. Uh, worst the thing worst. My mom can hear. And she was crying. I was crying, and I knew, I knew that I would never want to hurt my mom again like that again ever. So that's where I had to start changing my ways, making better decisions, and. Um, yeah, that was a oh, so low glad. point in my life. My family's life. I think yeah. we're all starting to kind of go in yeah. a bad direction. I'm so glad that you, because not all, I guess like people your age or kids your age really thought that way. Because some people can't get out of it and they don't change their ways like you do for a po- you know, positive. I, I saw how much, somehow that moment, a big part of my moment, like that crossroad moment in my life where I could keep on going down the path I'm uh-huh. going. And next time... No, I can be the one killed or, yeah, or, I and I, I said, I never want to hurt my mom again like that. Cause she was like oh. crying and we we're both crying, hugging in, in the, in the visiting room. And, and then I also, I found this book, it's called, uh, Embraced by the Light. When mm-hmm. I was in juvie, it was about a lady that had a near death experience and a real story. Mm-hmm. And she, you know, met Jesus at the tunnel and then he showed her a tour of heaven, gave her a a guided tour of heaven, how it would be. Yeah. And she came back and wrote a book about it called Embraced by the Light. And this is true. True, true. Oh. When I was in juvie, I found the book. No, no, and true that she experienced yeah, she, it. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. She definitely experienced it. She was on Oprah Winfrey and stuff. So oh, Betty wow. J. Edie, Embraced by the Light. Uh-huh. Best book I ever read. Uh-huh. I think that was the first book I ever read. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, you had a lot of time in juvenile hall. I had a lot of time to think so. about you know, my, my actions, right? Yeah. And so after that and seeing my mom so hurt, I, I took my life in a in, in a better direction. I wasn't an angel still, you know, but mm-hmm. I, I I knew that there was more to life than just the here and now and yeah. the, the, the the neighborhood and my, the gang life and drug life and stuff like that. Good for you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> so so what happened after that was we I got out and me, we're, we're kind of hanging out in the neighborhood again. And then we're still not angels, and and we get kicked out of the housing projects. We oh. get kicked out. You my, can get my family out. got kicked out of the housing like, project. How do you get kicked out of a housing project? We got in too much. We're doing too much bad stuff. And we're getting caught for it. I think a part oh, of the shooting was part of it, shoot. and other stuff we did. Got so then, recorded. yeah, and we're we're having um, uh, enemies inside the neighborhood with some of the other people that live there. Oh so, wow! So somehow the authorities said, you know what, you guys are moving out. You guys are moving. We're gonna get you Section Eight. So mm-hmm. that means that now they're going to let us rent a house outside of the housing project. Uh-huh. And they'll pay a, for a some portion, of it, portion of it, like half that. of it okay. or something. So I think that move saved my family mm-hmm. because now we're out of the housing projects and we're living in the suburbs, Shoreline. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Shoreline. Yeah, we know about Shoreline. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's that started healing our family and bringing us out from the temptation of things. Yeah. 
and then we're living there and now we're starting to come back together and then there was a we're still on food stamps yeah. we're still living on a welfare we're still getting all the government help my parents are still working like two or three jobs to make ends meet yeah and then there was a moment that changed the course of my family's life forever <laughs> what was it and it was an opportunity to start a catering truck Oh, so my mom and dad, yeah. This is when the catering truck came. This in. is where the catering <laughs> truck, the mobile catering truck. Yes. And so they were, they found somebody that was selling one. Uh huh. And my mom came to the family. We had like a family discussion. She yeah. said, "Hey, there's an opportunity to start this business again. I know we messed up during the Chinese restaurant days, mm -hmm. but we're, we're we got to get out of the system. We got to get out of poverty." Yeah. So my my family decided. Well, mainly my mom and dad decided. <laughs> Yes, you just guys went along we're, we're gonna start the catering truck. We're gonna we're gonna take all of our savings. Mm -hmm. We're gonna borrow some money. We're gonna buy this catering truck. I think it was around eighty thousand huh? to buy this catering truck. Eighty thousand. Eighty thousand dollars, which money we didn't have a lot of. That's so crazy because right now you can buy, you can buy a business for about eighty thousand. Yeah, so we That's bought the crazy. catering truck for eighty. That's but expensive. But remember, this huh? is this is a big deal because. Wow. We're all, but now when you start a business. You you have to show the book. You have to show your papers. Now you don't yeah. get government help anymore. Yeah. So now we don't get Section Eight. Yeah. We don't get food stamps. We don't get Social Security or not Social Security welfare. Mm -hmm. And um, but we can live off of the money from the catering truck and take care of ourselves. Yeah. So then my family we took a chance, did it, got off the system, moved to Kent, and. Uh, I mean that little catering truck. That's that's the little catering truck that saved our whole family. I tell Aww. you. Yeah, we we was able to buy a house oh in Kent gosh. at the time. I think it was like two hundred fifty thousand. <laughs> now it's like you can't buy anything for two hundred fifty. Now you can't right buy now. nothing for two hundred fifty. No, shacks like torn down. Shacks are selling at four hundred thousand dollars. You know that's so crazy. Right. So me, and then uh, bought the house. But I mean, all the siblings most at one time or another worked on the catering truck. Mm -hmm. So it's catering truck hard business is hard though yeah so you have to wake up like 4 30 5 in the morning wow and you work to about 3 p.m every day monday through friday and then when you're not working you're buying stuff for the next the day for the catering truck prepping and you know those hours don't stop and that it wasn't like a where it was right now catering trucks are really like hip and cool mm -hmm. you know like uh yeah, hipsters, cool. are, hipsters are eating on them they're like weddings are like hiring catering trucks everywhere in their venue outdoors yeah. you know and then you know, you come and you go get your food. It's super hip and cool right now. Yeah, back. I want to do that right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you be good. no, you do too no, much. No, right. I, you I, need to slow down. No, no, you need me. to work on. You need to keep <laughs> work on unforgettable. Stay there. Yeah, catering trucks were well back then. It was not cool. I hated working on the catering truck. Yeah, because I was seventeen, sixteen. Uh -huh. I want to hang out with my friends. You know, go yeah. smoke some weed and <laughs> go chase some girls. But I, my mom had to. I wake me up at five in the morning, go work on the catering truck. That's what boys think You're, about all the time. Just smoke weed, chase girls. At 16, 17, that's no, what you want. I don't that, know. Yeah, man. yeah, that's what you want to do. That's that, so crazy. And then we, uh, so uh, we work on the truck, but hipsters now, they park in one spot. They put on social media. Yeah. A bunch of people show up. They, they, they're done like at 12 o'clock. They're yeah. selling like 15, $20 plates, right? Yeah. We were, our system was different where we had... St set stops every day mm -hmm. we had like 30 set stops that we stopped at every day same time same place at um like labor jobs though yeah. it couldn't be no office job it had to be people that needed the calories yeah didn't mind like you know kind of greasy food yeah and uh i just hated that job though Aww. you know because it was it, it was like working at mcdonald's on a truck basically they probably on, kept on. you out of trouble because you didn't have time to get in trouble bingo yeah you no know, bingo uh, actually a lot of the times a lot of my friends were still selling drugs uh -huh. and um to make money because mm -hmm. you know they were still uh living in the project and stuff with their parents and i worked on the catering truck so there that's where i got my money i didn't have to go sell drugs there you go like they did so it actually saved me actually saved me smart it did save you i did I put my kids to work just like that that little catering truck <laughs> And, um, but, you know, over the years, that truck paid for a, a lot of my siblings' colleges, yeah. you know, you put them through universities, uh, paid for some weddings, paid for the, our house. And then we s was able to sponsor my sister, Ji Tung, Yay. my oldest sister that we left in Vietnam Hi when we Jay. left. Hi, Jay. Hi, Jay. Hi, Jay Tung. <laughs> Shout out to my sister, Ji Tung. Yeah. 
Ji Tung means uh, love, sister love in yeah. Vietnamese because Tung, Tung right? means love. Tung. Yeah, she, and she's she has the biggest heart. Yeah. So we was able to sponsor her family over her, her husband, three kids. Wow. And then um, she has know, a restaurant too. Her her right? yeah her her daughter opened a restaurant in Federal Way, a Katsu, Katsu Burger. Yeah, Katsu in Burger in Federal right Way, you guys. From the mall. Come support. Go support all the, <laughs> Look at all these restaurants hitting up. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my family didn't learn about uh, didn't learn about uh, not opening our kind of restaurant because now we have um, a lot. <laughs> yeah, now we have that one. So yeah, so that that little catering truck kind of changed the course of my whole family life. So now, you know, my my family's actually you know we're we're blessed. You know, we're yeah. we're doing good. Did um, you guys get? Do you feel like you working there and your relationship with your parents? helped you get closer or was how was this you know what did you gain from it yeah that was a good question yeah i loved them days where i worked on the catering truck yeah. for my mom and dad um and you know the catering truck is an interesting thing where you only can work on with one person at a time you only uh -huh. need it's, it's a two-person job so some couple months i'll work on it with my mom a couple months i'll work on it with my dad for um we had two shifts so or evening but i remember those were the closest times where me and my mom was kind of selling burgers off the back of the truck and mm -hmm. you know we were backing each other up and yeah. she asked me what i want to eat and i'm like yeah. i want a double bacon cheeseburger with fries mom <laughs> and put an egg on it you know, I and, know. and then we'll sit and just eat uh -huh. and uh yeah just be really close yeah think That's about it you're like oh mom those are things that you look back on yeah that little catering truck that could yeah yeah so um yeah all my siblings are good yeah so let's see richie Wait, yeah. Richie, the youngest, he's, uh, you know, killing it in the social media game, the YouTube game. Yeah. Has, like, over a million subscribers on uh, YouTube and has a really super successful clothing line called the Richie Lee Collection right now. Yeah. So if um, – and we're going to be interviewing Richie uh, in episode three. Yay, I'm of, excited. Of his journey, <laughs> you know, and in roots, right? If it yeah. wasn't from my mom's decision of leaving yeah. Vietnam and almost – you know, dying a few times, and now Richie's getting to bear fruit yeah. of, of that, that yeah. one action, you know, yeah. so roots. So we're going to be interviewing him for ep that episode. My, si my sister Julie, she's doing mm -hmm. really well, but she works for um, Microsoft. Yeah. What position? Just uh, she's, uh, I think curious. she's in marketing. Oh, marketing. So she's doing really good on Microsoft, have a super dope uh, daughter mm -hmm. named Elise. Yeah. And, um, I'm thinking she probably Calvin. gained a lot of experience through her younger years about just business in general. So she, I can, I mean, just having that like experience when you're young probably really helped her become a really strong woman right now. Yeah, she's, she, she, I, I'm really proud of her. Yeah. She, she went to school to be a social worker because when mm -hmm. we lived in the housing projects, you know, there were some really nice people that came around the housing mm -hmm. projects to bless us. Like during Tuesdays, we called them the Tuesday people, right? <laughs> we don't know who they were. There was this man and woman, like this uh -huh. uh, black guy and a white lady. Uh -huh. And they, they picked up all the housing project kids every Tuesday. Aww. And they took us to, like, a fun activity, you yeah. know, or a dinner. Oh, and we were wow. like, wow, like, we get to go to Sizzlers. That's so crazy. They're called the Tuesday <laughs> people. They did it for, like, a whole year. Aww. And I think they ran out of money. And they, they we didn't see what <laughs> You guys just ate too <laughs> dang we much. Just, we ate. We, we used to spend all the money. They take us to the Piala Fair. Oh, that's so sweet. You know, just nice people like Tuesday that. Big hearts, right? That we would never experience. Yeah. And then during Christmas time, there would be people that came around, gave us Christmas presents. Yeah. And we didn't know these people, but they, we got some really dope presents. Yeah, that's so awesome. And so, so my sister seeing that, she wanted to be a social worker. And, um, but then she saw how much social workers get paid. So after a couple of years, you're like, I'm off the Microsoft. <laughs> the, sh the struggles. I helped and now I left and now I'm going to go somewhere yeah, else. <laughs> I'm going to help myself now. Yeah. And then my brother, John, he's doing really well. Um. He, he's a really successful real estate broker yeah. and, and taking care of his family. And then my sister, Jackie, she's really successful. She works for a big medical medical supply company. She does like their bookkeeping or something, uh -huh. marketing, she, something. She's doing really well. And sister, Ji Tung, you know, she, yeah. she's here from, here, here from Vietnam, thriving. Uh -huh. And you know that house that yeah. we bought, my mom bought in Kent? Yeah. She gave it to my sister, Ji Tung. So now my sister and her family live in there. Uh huh. You know, so yeah, everything kind of came full circle. You guys did so good. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> I'm, oh, that's amazing. And I'm not doing so shabby either. You're, so you're doing blessed. pretty awesome. Doing, uh, I can't wait till you get to the other episodes where I get to learn the do's and don'ts and the how to build an empire and all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Some really exciting stuff. Yeah. So, can't wait. um, 
yeah, I think that that wraps up this yeah. episode. Yeah, and next episode is what we get to interview. We're interviewing Richie Lee. Yay! You know the superstar. The, yeah. The, the mover and shaker. You know, I actually looked him up um, just to see what I can learn about him. Thank you. I know. Isn't he awesome, Sky? <laughs> He's so awesome. I know. <laughs> But, um, and you know, he, it's so interesting and it makes me even more interested because there's not like, I know all the good things and all that stuff, but I really want to know who Richie Lee is and I'm ready to ask those intimate questions. So Richie, get ready for it. I do want to get a little intimate here because I'm sure everyone else does too. So, um, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting. All yeah. right. Tune in. Thanks for watching everybody. Stay, in, stay tuned.